Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Boss of Anatomy. Today we will see the middle cranial fossa in the interior of a skull base. First we see the boundary. The anterior boundary is formed by the posterior free margin of a laser wing of the sphenoid, anterior glenoid process and an anterior margin of a optic groove or a sulcus chiasmaticus. The posterior margin. The posterior margin. The posterior margin is formed by the superior border of a petrous temporal bone and dorsum cell. The lateral boundary is formed by the parietal bone, the squamous part of a temporal bone and the part of the greater wing of the sphenoid that will form the lateral boundary. Now the important part, the floor. The floor in the median region, middle region, it is formed by the body of the sphenoid. Literally, it is formed by the greater wing of the sphenoid, the squamous part of a temporal bone and the anterior surface of a petrous temporal bone, anterior surface of a petrous temporal bone. Now we see, first, the middle part of the floor, that is the body of a sphenoid. So the body of the sphenoid anteriorly presents one groove, horizontal groove. You can feel it better. This groove is known as an optic groove or a sulcus chiasmaticus. The sulcus chiasmaticus on the each side will lead into the optic canal. Okay. So this is optic groove. Now, the second part, posterior to the optic groove, the superior surface of a body of the sphenoid is hollowed out in the form of the turkey saddle, which is known as a cella turcica. Okay. So this part is known as a cella tersica. Now the cella tersica is having three parts. Anterior part is known as a tuberculum cella. The middle part is in the form of the deep fossa which is known as a hypophysial fossa. And the posteriorly transverse plate of the bone which is known as a dorsum cella. First talking about, uh, about the tuberculum cella. The tuberculum cella separates the optic groove or a sulcus chiasmaticus from the hypophysial fossa. On the lateral end of a tuberculum cella, it presents the two prominent structure which is known as a middle clinoid process. Middle clinoid process. Sometimes the middle clinoid process may fuse with the anterior clinoid process. Okay. Now the second part of a cella tersica. <coughs> The hypophysial fossa or a pituitary fossa is a deep fossa which lodges the hypophysis cerebri or a pituitary gland and uh, separate the middle cranial fossa from the sphenoidal and sinus field. The last, the posterior part of the cella tersica is known as the dorsum cella. Now the dorsum cella is in the form of the transverse plate of the bone which is directed upwards its superolateral corner will present the two prominent projection which is known as a posterior canoid process. Okay, so this is a middle part of the floor of middle canoid fossa. Now we see laterally. Laterally, first in the most anterior, you can see this one large fissure. This one. This is for a superior orbital fissure which leads anteriorly into the orbit. Superior orbital fissure. Now the superior orbital fissure above it is bounded by the posterior free margin of a laser wing of the sphenoid and below by the greater wing of the sphenoid. Medially it is bounded by the body of the sphenoid. Right? So this is superior orbital fissure. Now the structure present in the greater wing of the sphenoid. This is the greater wing of the sphenoid. Now posterior inferior, posterior inferior to the superior orbital fissure, you can see one rounded foramen which leads anteriorly. This foramen is known as a foramen rotundum, foramen rotundum which leads anteriorly, open anteriorly into pterygopalatine fossa. Now the posterior lateral, posterior lateral to the foramen rotundum, you can see the oval shaped foramen. This oval shaped foramen is known as a foramen oval. The foramen oval inferiorly leads into the infratemporal fossa. Posterior laterally to the foramen oval, you can also see the small one 
another foramina which is known as a foramina spinosa which also relates inferiorly into infratemporal fossa so this three foramina lies back to back posterior lateral to each other foramina rotundum foramina oval and spinosum r o s rose you can remember the mnemonic rose now the medial to the foramina oval and on the side of a body of the spinoid you can see the one large rounded foramina this foramina is known as a foramina lacerum this is foramina lacerum right so this is a structure present in the greater wing of a spinoid now this squamous part of a temporal bone inside it is marked by a vascular markings you can see here the vascular markings right now the third part in the lateral uh, region of a floor the anterior surface of the petrous temporal bone okay now near the apex this is the apex of a petrous temporal bone anterior uh, surface near the apex is marked by one uh, impression or a nodes this is known as a trigeminal impression which lodges the trigeminal ganglia with its tubular cap trigeminal impression later to the trigeminal impression you can see one narrow groove and the hiatus here lies the hiatus and the groove for the greater petrosal nerve which leads into the foramen or legs from hiatus and the groove for the greater petrosal nerve same the small groove and the hiatus for the lesser petrosal now later to it which leads into the foramen of oval hiatus and the groove for the lesser petrosal now leads into the foramen of oval still laterally you can see one pro prominent structure elevation which is known as an arcuate eminence arcuate eminence is produced by the superior semicircular canal inside the internal ear now anterior inferior to this arcuate eminence there is a thin plate of the bone which is known as a tegment tympani tegment tympani we will see the importance of tegment tympani in the norma basalis this is tegment tympani which is a part of the petrous temporal bone so this is all about a lateral part of a floor of uh, middle canal fossa now we see the important structure passing through this foramen so the orbital fissure these are all already discussed in the orbit now we see the other foramen first the foramen oval uh, sorry foramen rotundum the foramen rotundum will passes the maxillary nerve maxillary nerve now second the fora, uh, foramen oval structure passing through the foramen oval you can remember the word male m a l e M for mandibular nerve, A for accessory meningeal artery, L for laser petrosal nerve, and E for immediate way connecting the cavernous sinus internally with the extracranial veins. Male. Now the foramen spinosum. You can remember the M three, three M, meningeal branch of a man, uh, mandibular nerve, middle meningeal artery, and Middle meningeal vein, its posterior term that passes through the foramen spinal. Now, the foramen lacerum, the structure passing through the foramen lacerum are a, a meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and immediate vein. Okay. Now, the you have to remember the important relation of a foramen lacerum. the superior surface of the foramen lacerum is uh, related to internal carotid artery okay and the sympathetic and the venous plexus around the internal carotid artery now within the foramen lacerum the greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve will unite to form nerve of pterygoid canal which leaves the anterior uh, leaves the foramen lacerum through its anterior wall enter into the pterygoid canal so these are the important relation as the structure passing through the foramen lacerum attachment and the relation of a middle canal fossa 
The medial tibial fossa lodges the temporal lobe of our brain, cerebral hemisphere. The tuberculum cellite and the dorsum cellite will provide the attachment of a diaphragmatic cell. Now, the upper, uh, the, on the cavernous sinus will lie on the each side of a body of a skin. Here lies the cavernous sinus. And the superior border of a atrus temporal bone, this one, it provides the attachment of uh, attached margin of a tentorium cerebral. And you can also see the groove on the superior border of a petrous temporal border. This groove lodges the superior petrosal sinus. So this is all about the middle canal fossa. Thank you. If you like this video, like it and share with your friends. And to get the regular update on the anatomy videos, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.